Do you know the difference between a challenger jungler and you? It is simply your roam dominance score, otherwise known as your ganking success rate in the early game. And it's the same whether you're iron or diamond. For every single champion in the game that plays in the jungle, while their farming goes up, the higher rank they are, so does the ganking. So how are they doing it? It's not necessarily that you are not trying to gank as much, it's simply that your ganking sucks and you're unable to get the success from the attempts and thus you are unable to get kill leads, gold leads and win games. So in this video I will show you everything you need to know about ganking so that you can leave it and basically go and destroy the map every single early game and thus be able to carry win and climb in season 13 with ease mind you we all know you love the orbs that gave me form so it's about time you protect your orbs this christmas santa ross will allow you to sing jingle balls to your heart's content with a new performance package by manscaped which possesses the lomo 4.0 body trimmer for those without the power to grow such own luscious facial hair the body trimmer can be used from head to toe so that you may look like a boiled egg and then why not stuff your stocking with the crop preserver and ball reviver because remember smell good feel good play good and smooth, you feel smooth. And new to the collection is the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear and Hair Trimmer. Rust knows you all snort that copium, so why not make inhalation easy by using the Weed Whacker which has the same 360 degree rotary blades and skin safe technology as the Low Mower 4.0. Plus the Ultra Smooth Care Package. Manscaped is for the entire body, mind, and driving soul. Every guy out there needs to add Manscaped to their wish list this season. If you've been a good jungler and not smited any cannons, why not treat yourself to a performance package by Manscaped? You can get all of this for 20 20% off plus two free gifts. How generous. Click the link in the description below and use code for Caillou at manscaped.com. Right, first and foremost, we need to talk about the most important thing, and that's whether the gank you want to commit is warded or unwarded, and do you know or do you not know? We will look at all these eventualities, but please consider the summoner spells and dash ability of the champion you are ganking, as well as your champions, as well as your laner's champions. This is something so fundamental, I'm not going to basically deal with it in each and every example. Use your FPs, click around the map, make sure you are keeping track of summoner spells as much as possible, but in the event you don't know what's going on, I will also address this in those ganks. Now let's look at this side lane gank. You can see here that we want to approach the lane in a very classical sense. You can directly go straight at your laners, run at them, but then you need to consider where are they located in the lane and what summoner spells do they have that might allow them to create space for my laners as well as me. That is the first on the ganking checklist and it's something that has to go through your mind as you are approaching. Now for a push lane, this is pretty damn simple. I don't really care where exactly you are arriving from, but as soon as you see that lane super pushed up, we don't really care if it is warded or not. So if it is, doesn't matter. If it isn't, doesn't matter. Just press the go button, continue your approach, and then go all in. Make sure you get the kills, and obviously use all your spells appropriately. That's an easy one. However, what you do need to pay attention to is the minion wave, theirs versus yours. If your team has none, and they're basically backing up on tower with no HP, you can't expect any sort of help from your team, and thus you don't want to gank the enemy within that lane, and then tank all of the minions damage, plus the laner's damage. So therein is the calculations you need to conduct in your head, very, very simply, very, very quickly. Can I do this 2v1? one with the minions being tanked or do I have to wait for the minions to crash in which case a little bit of patience is important and obviously pressing that scanner or using your control ward to see if you are seen is kind of useful but you don't really want to wait to clear those wards because if the enemy lane starts to detach you spend time clearing a ward you might not have that great angle by the time you start approaching now if the lane is in a more neutral position in the middle then the fact that it's warded versus not warded becomes a little bit more important basically in this situation if you use your approach to kind of cut around the corner like you know if they were pushed up it allows the enemy to pull away from you and the only way that's okay is if it is one warded in the bush you walk through and so you just press the go button and two your team actually has cc or some sort of ability to chase the enemy down think at least cocoon think kindred ranged advantage think graves e smokescreen with a w you have to understand your champion if you simply cannot have that chase ability for whatever reasons depending on your laners and you then it's better to go for a longer more wide approach and you want to be scanning for the duration you want to make sure you avoid any side vision from the laner and of course their minions. This allows you to now have a better angle of approach as you're going into the lane to ensure that you can maximize your CC and damage before they maybe dash or flash or simply die, which is what we want. If you are coming straight from the river, then that's less of an issue. You can just stick to the wall. The most important thing here is to use your scanner, pay attention to when laners leave lane to place those wards. And then obviously if the lane is pushed up, then you're basically going for a dive. And yes, in that case, if you are seen, you want to know it because your jungle tracking will tell you where the enemy jungler is. But if you have a small window whereby you can just go for this dive before enemies show up, then you don't want to waste too much time clearing the vision, waiting around all simply
simply sitting in a bush and going, he doesn't see me, but he does. And that therein is absolute pro tip. Don't go for a gank when the lane is kind of in a weird position such that you have to wait for it to push a little bit and you don't scan and you don't use a control ward. Never sit in the bush if you are not 100% certain that it isn't warded. You are wasting time, you are seen, you are giving them free counter jungling, free heralds, free opposite side plays, free counter ganks. It is absolutely tragic. But when you break it down like this, it doesn't seem so difficult. Push lane, just cut it, doesn't matter if it's warded or not. Middle lane, check if it's warded, check if it isn't, but based upon your champion, you can do either of those approaches. And then obviously the dives, that's a case of juggling aggro, using CC and dodging spells, and that comes with practice. Please go commit those dives. I want you to die a few times. You're not gonna get better at it until you do it. And as far as the ranged advantage goes, make sure you keep yourself in a position whereby as the enemy is running towards you, if you have a good angle of approach and then walking away from you, that whole arc, you are attacking them. So don't stand still, keep moving to maximize the amount of attack you can get for the duration that they're trying to leave you. And this can be if your kindred graves any sort of ranged auto attacker because your spells are interwoven with that, and essentially it just boils down to just keep auto attacking, please use your range advantage, you don't need to go up into melee range or only hit your spells. It's really amazing what one auto attack can do on a gank, as you would have seen just there. And you also would have noticed that there was a nice tight approach, even though the lane was kind of in a D neutral position, by that I mean more towards the enemy's tower than ours, you can still get a really nice angle of approach if you stick tight to the wall. And if you're basically talking about all of these approaches into the mid lane, all of the same concepts apply. Do I need to go for a dive? Is it better to wrap around the back? Of course. Can I just run straight from the river? Yes, but only if you know it's not warded or if you know that they're low and you can chase them down. You have to do these calculations using your F keys. I'm not here to tell you exactly when to use what because that will change every single game with a million different factors and only you can recognize and process that. And obviously for the pathing tricks to circumvent and get around vision when you know it's warded, that I've already made a video about and I will leave it linked in the description below. We talk about every single sort of gap in vision you can use as a ganker to approach and make sure you get that best angle of approach such that your attacks and everything can land perfectly. Well, provided you can hit skill shots, yeah? Now that's the approach of the gank and is usually quite simple. Your Rex eyes and canes can obviously extend that approach and so can Zax. Some champions don't have to apply the rules to themselves because of their unique kids, but the rest of us, hey, if we scan and it's warded and the lane's in a bad situation and they decompress, such is the life of the jungler, you know? You can't go for that gank, you just clear the vision, do something else, and then you can always come back again. But when we are actually going for the gank, you need to know when to fully commit or approach. As such, you might need a little bit of that patience as well. Hey, we scanned, there's no vision, lane's in a terrible state, but looks to be pushing back towards my side. I can wait a little bit. I wasn't seen. There's no other play that can be made. Is the enemy jungler coming down and I tracked it? I can just sit in this bush and counter gank him without him even getting to the gank in the first place. These are the sorts of things that jungle tracking, again, full guide, linked below. Everything you need to know about tracking to make you a savant in that video. And you know, we're not really using the pings as they're intended on EU West, as I'm sure most of you know, but ideally in sort of neutral lanes that are not a free gank. By that, I mean, you know, when they're not just juicy pushed and you can just run in and do whatever monkeys do and fling some shit at them and get the kill. It's way better if the laners can kind of bait in those spells by forcing an engage, positioning in a very suggestive way, and then you can show up once their spells have been used, and usually that's when you get the free kills. And that's when you know it's not water because you've scanned, because you've been paying attention, such that you can afford to use that patience. If it is warded and you know you can make this play, or simply if your laners are absolutely terrible at the game and don't do the bait, then we just have to pull the trigger ourselves. And that's a critical thing about ganking. Don't wait too long when the lane is good. Just go, just walk, just engage, hit your spells, and that's all you need to do. People are way too hung up on enemies missing their spells, on your team missing their spells. Just focus on yours. If your laners have CC and they actually go for it, use yours afterwards. Don't use it at the same time. You want to stack that CC as much as possible. If you have a CC spell and no one else has CC and the enemy laner is, say, someone very mobile, then you want to hold your spell until they've used a the dash, until they've used a the flash. Don't waste your CC spell with flash when you know they're just going to flash and dash afterwards. Only do that if it's really early and you know you're going to repeat that lane in a very short while. But ideally, you're not doing that anyway. We're walking at them. We're using the good angle of approach. We're using our other spells, our auto attacks. We want to bait them into using their mobility, then we use our CC, we've already preloaded them with damage, now we can pile on with our laners and most likely they'll die. If they don't die, then they will use their dash afterwards and of course that's where your auto attacking relentlessness comes in. But that is the absolute key to all ganking, stacking CC and being patient with CC and also basically paying attention to when the lane is in the best spot for you to pull the trigger. And this is a very potent question people always ask, how long should I wait in the bush for the gang? Well if you learn about lane states, you can kind of tell pretty quickly and if your team 
team are looking to bait and no one's going in, then you can simply use your approach to get whatever spells off you can and then leave the gank alone. If the enemy is playing super safe for about 5 to 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and it looks like, hey, they're not really going for this, then just leave and carry on about your business. The only time you want to really chill in a bush is if you're setting up something huge, huge ultimate spike, a herald push. You know the enemy jungle is arriving and you are doing one of these beautifully patented lane ganks. A lane gank simply moving through the middle of the lane in any of the lanes or using the side bushes in top and bot to basically surprise the enemy laner despite what their positioning might be. If they push further up or push further back, sometimes it doesn't really matter. Very often you can counter gank mid lane through the lane gank as you're cutting by farming. Something happens, you're like, oh, I better turn on that. And you just cut down and make a play. You save a laner or, you know, you get a cleanup kill. It doesn't really matter. The key is you have to pay very careful attention to the mini waves in every sort of gank, but definitely the lane ganks to ensure that the surprise is best met with surprise. Effectively, this sort of champion pool allows you to approach in an unexpected way, especially when you are in a negative game state, such as you're being invaded, enemy jungle has prior over your jungle, and you're just looking to snowball one of the lanes to try and win the game. Obviously, those are but some of the junglers you can use to lane gank. Almost anyone can actually do it, especially when they bring Dove. But these are especially good when you know the rivers or other bushes are warded, and you can't really get a great angle of approach, you know, unless you're scanning and clearing the vision, which of course gives you away your position, and now you're seen and there's nothing else to do on the side of the map so you have to swap and go to the other side the enemy jungle is going to show up now what it's better than after you're doing a quadrant for example slide into those side bushes make sure you know the jungle is coming or not coming and then obviously scan and use control wars you don't sit in a bush knowing that you're seen we've talked about this please don't do that it's embarrassing this is great when that lane is kind of pushed up a little bit and you know the enemy is going to try and use their lead or their aggression to try and force some sort of fight honestly there's not a lot of big brain weird tactics that no one's ever heard of in terms of ganking where i say listen this is the best place to do a lane gank no one's ever done this trick ever it makes junglers op no that's just clickbait it's not real you just have to go into a game thinking right this is the lane i want to gank pay attention to the lane state is it warded is it not warded which is the best angle of approach here based upon their cc my cc my lane cc and what dash ability and flashes we have if it's sort of you know loaded up the best thing for you to do when you want to repeat lanes or repeat lane ganks as it were is to use different varied approaches now if you happen to be a good counter jungler or, you know, enemy jungler shows bot lane, you know, you sacrifice them because that's what you do with bot lane. You take their cams. This gives you a much better angle of approach for top and of course mid lane. Use those to get great angles of approach in every single opportunity. As soon as you counter jungling, the first thing you look for afterwards isn't falling back to base, isn't falling back to your jungle. Look at the lanes. Can I dive? Can I flank from behind? Because when I flank from behind, that's the best angle of approach to hit CC and all my damage spells. So say you go through this video and you're like, well, that doesn't really help me. I knew all of this. Trust me, go watch one of your games. Yourself or go watch one of your games. I guarantee you, you one, sat in a bush that wasn't warded, two, walked through a bush that was warded, didn't think about it, and had a terrible angle of approach such that the laner saw you and just ran away. Another one is that the most likely the lane was in a push state and you thought that's ungankable. Well, why didn't you just walk tight to the wall like I showed in the Zyra Cassante example? Why didn't you wait for the lane to push and go for a dive? Just because a lane is in what you perceive as an ungankable state doesn't mean it's actually ungankable. As long as you understand tower hugging, patience versus no hesitation based upon whether they're fighting or not. You know, if they're fighting and you're walking up, I don't care if it's watered, that's great, they're focused on each other. That's when you show up to get those kills. It's also based on your ability to actually hit your spells and chain CC together and obviously track spells. Most people just front load all their CC, the enemy just flashes out and runs away. Then they do it again, then they do it again. Why don't you try be a little bit patient if the lane is in a very gankable position? You have time as they try and leave the lane for you to actually hit your spells. And if they do flash and you don't, well guess what? The next time you arrive, that's a dead laner. Watch this video, watch your replays where you think, oh, there's no ganks available. Look at the lanes very carefully. Look where you're located on the map. Could I have just passed in a different way? There are a multitude of ways to path into every single lane. I showed that with arrows in this video. Checklist it, check mark it, and check it twice. Santa will not be coming if you do not gank your laners thrice. And on that note, I give you season's beatings from the junglers to the laners. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share, and comment if you enjoyed and learned something. And if you want to be the absolute best jungler in every single facet, not just ganking, supreme if you will, click the video in the box in your top right. And hey, you know what? In the spirit of smiting laners, why don't we go ahead and smite that like button and make sure that laners know no, we are all learning how to gank and we are coming for their asses. Or whatever degenerate chosen vernacular you would choose to threaten laners. I chose one that doesn't get me demonetized.